Mind you, in passport holders intending to visit the United Arab Emirates (UAE) are now mandated to pay a non-refundable 640,000 naira fee to obtain a document verification number (DVN) before applying for a visa. Hi, welcome to what's happening. These are the top 10 stories countdown today. At number 10, the 20 clubs in the Nigerian Professional Football League (NPFL) met Tuesday at their annual general meeting AGM to decide on the format for the 2024-2025 season. The clubs deliberated on whether to adopt an abridged or full scheduled format, with most club owners favoring the abridged format due to financial constraints. The clubs are also expected to ratify the kickoff date for the new season, which the MPFL board has set for Saturday, August 31st. At number 9, Rwandan President Paul Kagame won a fourth term, securing 99.15% of the vote in Monday's election, as announced by the Election Commission. His only two challengers, Frank Habineza and Felipe Payimana, received 0.53% and 0.32% of the votes respectively. The 66-year-old leader has been in power for nearly three decades, credited with Rwanda's recovery post-1994 genocide, but also criticized for his authoritarian rule. At number 8, the federal government Tuesday struck a $50 million joint contribution deal with the private sector to address the funding gap in tuberculosis, TB services, and enhance TB cases, finding, and treatment. Coordinating Minister of Health and Social Welfare, Professor Ali Pate, announced the agreement during the launch of the private sector strategy to end tuberculosis in Nigeria, held in Lagos. The government and private sector will each contribute $25 million to support the national TB program, aiming to eliminate tuberculosis by 2030. At number 7, the Minister of Innovation, Science and Technology, Chief Uchen Naji, has declared that Nigeria must address misconceptions about biotechnology. Naji made the statement at an international conference on biotechnology in Abuja with the theme biotechnology as an engine for economic growth. He highlighted biotechnology's potential to boost Nigeria's GDP and improve food security through innovative agricultural practices. He stressed the importance of creating a supportive ecosystem for biotech startups and public education to dispel myth about biotechnology. At number 6, the House of Representatives member for Chikun and Kajuru Federal Constituency in Kaduna State and Chairman of the House Committee on Sports, Ekene Adams, passed on early Tuesday. The cause of his death remains unknown. Various sports groups, including the MPFL Club Owners Association, have begun mourning his loss. Adams, a former football player and general manager of Rainbow Stars, was elected to the House in the 2023 general elections. At number 5, the Lagos State Police Command has disclosed that a 17-year-old girl who accused a cop in the state of rape has been made to undergo medical examination, according to the command's public relations officer, Benjamin Hundayin. The girl alleged she was assaulted by the officer while seeking help to retrieve a stolen phone. Her mother, Aramide Olubona, reported the incident after noticing her daughter began bleeding the following day and accused the police of attempting to cover up the case. Hundayin stated that the investigation's outcome depends on the medical examination results to determine the officer's culpability. At number four, Nigerian passport holders intending to visit the United Arab Emirates (UAE) are now mandated to pay a non-refundable 640,000 naira fee to obtain a document verification number (DVN) before applying for a visa. The DVN valid for 14 days from issuance or until the visa application is processed aims to ensure that all necessary documents are digitally verified and authenticated. Meanwhile, the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, has facilitated the repatriation of 190 Nigerians from the UAE. The returnees were received at the Namdi Aziku International Airport, Abuja, at 5.45 a.m. Tuesday. 
Director of the North Central Zone, Bashir Idris Gaga, noted that the returnees were sensitized to uphold decorum and responsibility upon their return to Nigeria. At number three, the Kano State Government Tuesday filed new charges against former Governor Abdullahi Gantije, accusing him and former Commissioner for Justice Musa Lawan of criminal conspiracy and misappropriation. The charges, outlined in case number K143C24, allege violations of sections 308, 309, 97, and 315 of the Penal Code. The government also accuses Gandhije and Lawan of abuse of office and plans to present four witnesses in the case. No date has been set yet for the arraignment. At number two, the federal government has assured Nigerians that the Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway project will be completed and should do despite heavy rainfalls. Federal Controller of Works in Lagos State, Mrs. Olukarede Kisha, made this assurance on Tuesday in Lagos emphasizing the commitment to manage water levels to maintain construction progress. The project, initially estimated to take eight years and cost four billion naira per kilometer, has seen the first phase from Ahmad Bello Way, Victoria Island to Lake Phase 1 already being completed. Finally, at number one, Ahead of President Bala Ahmed Tinubu's planned Thursday meeting with Labour leaders, Nigeria Labour Congress NLC President Joe Ajero has threatened a one-month shutdown if lawmakers move the minimum wage from the exclusive to concurrent list in the Constitution. Ajero issued the warning on Monday at the NLC Annual Rain School in Uyo, Akwaibam State. He criticized the National Assembly's proposal to let state governors determine the minimum wage. Ajero vowed to mobilize a nationwide shutdown if the law is changed. That's it on what's happening. You can get the full stories on our website at www.rootstv.ng. Follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Roots TV Nigeria to join the conversation. Thanks for watching.